Police made several arrests on Saturday as a wave of demonstrations against the death of a black man gave way to a night of vandalism and looting in Wisconsin. Uh, shop fronts and windows were smashed and covered in graffiti as police in riot gear struggled to keep order as protests continued across the country for the fourth night. Judge Floyd died on Monday, May the 26th in Minneapolis after being arrested. Graphic video footage taken by an onlooker's cell phone and widely secured circulated on the internet shows the honor unarmed Floyd with a police officer's knee pressed into his neck, gasping for air and repeatedly groaning. The video reignited an outpouring of rage that civil rights activists said showed persistent racial bias in the U.S. criminal justice system, sparking a wave of violent protest across the U.S. Joining us live is Serena Afoqua, who is a registered nurse in Atlanta, to take a look at these issues. Good evening. Uh, Serena. Good evening. How are you? I'm well. How are you too? I'm doing great. I'm doing now, what what is it about this incident that you feel has captured the attention of the world? Well, I believe that um, in light of the coronavirus, you know, we're looking at each country. I think the attention is drawn on. Um, what's going on in each country, you know, you have the coronavirus and we're keeping up with numbers, we're keeping up with, you know, how they're handling um, the situation in Italy, how they're handling it in China. We're looking at that interrelationship um, in the world. So the fact that you have the coronavirus being a major issue at this time, for something like this to erupt, you know, it draws the attention of the world. Like, okay, what else is going on here, you know? I think America is always at the epicenter of a lot of um, attention and a lot of, um, you know, change that is being made in the world. Um, sometimes it starts here, you know, and it, 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 um, it reflects on us as a country um, with us being uh, quoted, you know, the greatest country. Now, I don't side with any of that, but what I'm thinking is that, you know, because of the attention that is drawn on America, um, especially now with us having the highest number of deaths uh, from the coronavirus, the attention is so intense on, okay, what's going on here? And so you have incidences like this now spreading across the country and it's drawing more attention. It's like, okay, what else is going on? So I believe that's, that plays a part into why it is now spread out into the world, this, this incident. All right. Um Serena, if you can hear me, there's a bit of challenge with your connection. But if you can hear me, do you feel the reaction, this reaction to the death of Judge Floyd is a build-up of previous injustices? Mm -hmm. um, it is, um, I believe it's a culmination of what has happened in the past. We have made a lot of progress here in the United States as far as um, racial lines being blurred. We've made a lot of progress um, from Martin Luther King, even prior to that, there's been a lot of progress made in different steps. So to still see the injustices that are going on without um, the proper reprimand, if I could say it that way, with the proper, without the proper reprimand as it is given to other incidences you know, um, within the Caucasian community, when it's against Blacks, then there's kind of a lesser uh, punishment. And that's, that's the word you know, on the street. That's what is being talked about. So the comments that were made by that particular speaker prior was stating that you know, it's not about the death of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And that's correct. It is not about his death in particular. But if you knew there was a case not long ago, a jogger who was also gunned down, and this was not by a police officer or um, anyone authorized to do so, but they took matters in their own hand. And the, in the, the understanding is that because they were Caucasian, they were not apprehended right away. This had gone on for some time and an outcry was made. And when the outcry was made is when action was taken. So we're seeing again an imbalance with, you know, Caucasian victim and a African-American victim. 
So I believe that this is, it kind of is a building up of tension in light again of the coronavirus having to be quarantined, businesses being shut down, and the different things that are adding to the stress of individuals, this is kind of like that tipping point. Mm -hmm. You know, it just reflects again that we've made progress, but we really didn't make that much progress. Right. And that is the point of the people, the ones that I've been talking to as I've been following the news, as I've been following different commentators, that is the mindset of the people is that, okay, we were supposed to have made progress, but we really have now people are uh, lashing out inappropriately, but they are lashing out. Right. Now, we see police brutality the world over. Does this not raise issues around police psychology rather than merely racial issues? Essentially, I'm suggesting that it is not merely black and white. What's your thought? When you say uh, police psychology, can you clarify what you mean by that? Did you hear me? Or do I take my question again? You can repeat your question. So I'm talking about people's reaction to all that is happening. We see police brutality all over the world. Is this showing something deeper than what we can see from the face level? Uh, definitely. Um, you know... It's important to identify the root cause of this issue. The police are only allowed to do what they are told to do. And so we have to look at what are they being told to, what are they being trained to do, what are they being allowed to do. We also have to look at the background of um, the political system here. The political system is in such a, a disarray at this time, especially with elections coming up, you know, there's going to be a lot of tension on either side, you know, the policies on this end, the policies on that end, who is, uh, you know, dictating in such a way that's influencing our mayors, our governors, our police force, you know, so it, it goes deeper than police brutality. Police aren't just a free agent and they're going around doing what they want to do. When you have individuals in the police force that are corrupt and they come into the police force, you're giving them power to do what they naturally already are. And a person is going to display who they are despite certain rules and regulations. So when you have corrupt individuals, and we've always had corrupt uh, police officers, uh, you know, and every individual isn't, you know, upstanding. So you have people come into the force, but what is the, the mandate for them? What is the, the, the structure of reprimand for them? If they don't feel that they're going to be reprimanded, then they are more free to do what they would naturally do. So we have to look at the root of how are the, how is the police force being trained? How are they being um, mandated to behave in certain situations or towards a certain people? Now, I, I won't speak on the president or presidential hopefuls, but what I will say is that it, it does not start with the police. It starts from behind the police. Who is in control? That's who we have to look at. So it's not a, it's not a black on, on, on white thing. For the most part, and I do have to comment on something that was said earlier is that for the most part, it's not uh, that African Americans would like to wreak havoc because of police brutality. But because of the police brutality, we are starting to see that there are some things that are not in our favor. There are some things that, from the root, are not in our favor. And so that incites people to take things into their own hands. Now, whether they take them into their own hands in the right way or the wrong way, that's what you're seeing displayed now. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this, this, uh, this rioting, the, the looting that's going on, all of those things and the action that they're taking is not peaceful, it's not um, justified. If the anger perhaps is justified, but the action that you take should be more of a legislation a legislative move you know I don't believe that this is uh, just okay the police is brutalizing us and you know we have to do stuff what, what can you do that's effective 
is my standpoint. And that would be take it to legislation, legislation, you know, create laws that govern the police, policing the police. You may have seen hashtags about that. So, but Serena, before I, I let you go, sorry, I have to interject. Before I let you go, with all of this that is going on, do you feel safe as a person of a color? You know, uh, do you are you worried of all the developments coming up? Me personally, I'm not because uh, I'm a woman of faith and my trust is in God. I don't have any concern. I have no fear. I see what's going on from a I'm a black woman, but I'm, I don't feel like I'm a part of the, the hostility. I was not happy to see what happened with the, with the, the gentleman that uh, died. But personally, I can't. Uh, I feel like, again, it needs to be approached in a certain way. But I don't feel any fear or threat against myself when I go out. When I go out, to, I, I still work. I work every day and I go out to work. I'm not afraid. I think I even passed the protest at one point. Um, but it's a matter of knowing your position. You know, if you, if you, again, in any society, if you follow the rules, most likely you're not, you don't have to be fearful of anything. But, you know, if you're out there and you're riding, you're putting yourself in a more dangerous position than if you were just, you know, falling in line with, with what is, uh, the basic rules. So I don't have any fear at all for myself. All right, Serena, we'll leave it there. Thank you so very much for your time with us on News on the R. Thank you for having me.